Do you like Star Wars Unlimited? Do you like card games with organized play, tournaments, organized play promos, and all of the tropes that come with expandable card games? Then today I'm going to tell you about what I think is one of the coolest new card game systems from this year. I'm going to tell you all of the organized play and all the information that you need to know to be able to get started playing this game. And that is Pagan, The Fate of Roanoke. What is going on everybody? My name is Jay, this is Unplayable, and thank you for joining me today as I explain to you everything you need to know about Pagan, The Fate of Roanoke. Pagan, The Fate of Roanoke is an expandable card game that is asymmetrical, and I'm gonna kinda do a brief overview. This is not a learn to play, and I'm not doing a gameplay in this video, but I will be doing some additional videos for Pagan as time goes by. But I'm just gonna give you a brief summary of the kind of overview of the game and then tell you everything that I know so far about organized play and the promos that come with that. So, like I said, Pagan is an expandable card game where one player is playing the witch and one player is playing the witch hunter. You kind of play out your turns like normal card games. You have an upkeep, you have an action phase, you have resources that you're going to be spending, you have ways to gain resources and way to, ways to play cards or draw cards and kind of try to control any engine that your opponent might be playing or try to build an engine yourself. And essentially, as the witch hunter, your win condition is to find out which one of the nine villagers that are going to be on display and for use in this particular game is the witch. While the witch, their win condition is trying to create a scenario where they can perform a ritual before you find out which villager is the witch. It changes every game which, which, which villager is going to be the witch. You basically randomly draw which villager it is, which of the nine villagers that are available for the game that the witch is going to be. So every time you play, it could be the same villager, it could be a new villager, you never really know. And one of the cool mechanics of this game is as the witch hunter, you will be able to kind of some at some point build up enough resources to draw from the top of the villager deck so that you can eliminate that that who that villager is not the witch. The witch hunter is going to be playing allies and playing uh, investigations to try and get information from the villagers to try and figure out who the witch is. While the witch is going to be brewing potions, casting spells, using fam a familiar as an advantage, and then spreading secrets, gaining favors to try and perform this ritual. Uh, some of the cool stuff that this game uh, has is one, there is deck customization. Two, there are scenarios, even in the base game, which I'm gonna get to products in just a minute and how the expanding of the game is going to go. But in the base game, there are scenarios where you kind of change up some of the rules for the game where you get re extra resources as the witch for doing something, but as the witch hunter, you get something else. There's different villagers that are gonna be coming out into the display. And this game does have a worker placement mechanic like board games. If you're a board gamer, you know what worker placement is. If you're not a board gamer, worker placement means you take one of your workers, which is usually like a little pawn, and you place it on an action selection area and you get to perform that action blocking it for anybody else that would want to do that action until your worker is removed. Now, I didn't get too deep into the scenarios, but there are really cool things that they can do with these scenarios and changing up the game from time to time. And that's outside of deck customization, which is really neat, I think. And you'll get to see more of that later, but just know that there is more variability than just deck customization with scenarios that they create. Now, product cycle. So this is the base, I, you can consider it a base game or a starter box. It comes with everything you need to play as the witch hunter and the witch. It has uh, starter decks for each, all of the resource tokens that you need and worker tokens that you need, the player boards, all of that comes in this base game or starter box, whatever you wanna call it. And then, they introduce new content packs. Think of it as an LCG. These are content packs that you will be able to buy that add to the witch, the witch hunter, 
I said that backwards. The Witch Hunter, the Witch, and adds new cards that you can use to customize your decks. In addition to big boxes, they're pro I don't think that they're gonna be the size of the starter box, but there are gonna be larger boxes, larger than these packs, that come with additional scenarios, come with additional cards for uh, both of the factions, comes with new villagers that are gonna be placed into the shared area. I think that's really, really neat. I don't think it's anything uh, super new in terms of product cycle or product uh, releases, but I think it works really well, especially for a game like this. Let's go ahead and talk about organized play. The company Capstone Games is really motivated, Capstone and, and Worm Gold are very motivated to try and get an organized play going and a scene for organized play. They are going to have local level LGS's events where you can go participate. And if you know anything like Star Wars Unlimited, Star Wars Unlimited offers organized play packs that you can get special cards just for showing up on your local night. Well, they're gonna do something similar to that for Pagan. Pagan has these cool little promo organized play packs. And in these packs, you're gonna be able to get alternate arts, you're gonna be able to get foils, and all different cool cards that come in this for villagers, for the witch hunter, and for the witch. I'm gonna open a few of these so you guys can see what it looks like in just a moment. They want to be able to hold tournaments, they wanna be able to have this local level for this game to be able to have this community that comes together and really makes this game shine. So I'm, I'm super excited and hopeful for what they can do because they're very ambitious and they're very, very much trying to build from the floor up, which I think is great for a game like this. Uh, one cool thing that they're going to do as well at the local level is they are going to create special scenarios for tournaments that you can have as your organized play for the week. So it might be one of the ones that exist, but it could be a ones that they've created specifically for tournaments. And then they want, will probably do higher level tournaments where you can travel and play and they might have special scenarios for that all the way up to worlds. So without further ado, I'm gonna crack open a couple of these organized play packs. Oh, look at that. I already got a foil right on top. That is awesome. And it's one of my favorite uh villagers in the game we have a foil preacher wolfric this is a villager that you can place your uh worker on to do whatever the action ability is and then we have two uh alternate art cards this one is blood money and this one is the main hall this foil looks really good though let's crack open another one so we do have a full art in this one it is a full art of one of the um, villagers in the stout category, which is red. And then we have one of each for the wolf or for the witch hunter and the witch, quarantine and hypnotism. We got another, we got two full arts in this one. We got a full art of Hunter Adams, uh, villager and the caretakers. And then we got a full art assist, which which is a familiar. And then we also got the study. Our last promo pack. We got a full art of the stranger Sue villager in the voluntary recluses. And then we also got suggestion alt art and study alt art. So those are the four that I had to open, but these are things you're going to be able to get just for showing up at your local game store to play Pagan on their weekly nights and you have a chance of getting foils like the Preacher Wolfric foil I got, full arts, alt arts, alt art full arts, and then foil full arts, which I think is really, really fun way. I think I love it in Star Wars Unlimited, and it's a really fun way to engage the community to convince them to come to weekly nights. So if you like card games and you like playing in tournaments and going to weeklies and uh, building decks. This is a highly strategic game. I didn't go into the depth of the gameplay and an overview of the entire game, which I probably will do in a future video, but I really wanted to give you insight into the concepts that they're generating for this game what the gameplay is like. I just wanted to get some information out there because I think this game is awesome and I would love for it to take off and hit the ground running whenever they start their organized play program, which I think they're wanting to start at 
maybe the end of the year or start of next year. It has the game itself has a really nice cadence to it. It has super strategic playing. It's got so much that doesn't exist in card games today. It's incredibly unique, probably the most unique co deck construction card game that I've ever played. I think it's very, very fun. So I highly re recommend checking it out and hopefully you enjoy it as much as I do. But that's gonna be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.